Shall we look to God's word? The Pearl of Psalms, Psalm chapter number 23. Had a good buddy up in uh, up above Winston Salem, and uh, he said that he felt like this ought to be read at every funeral. And then if it's read two or three times, it don't hurt anything. But it's the Pearl of Psalms. Sometimes we call it the Good Shepherd Psalm, and um, I hope you know him like the psalmist did, and you can say the Lord is my shepherd. That's one of the greatest things a person can say, knowing that you're a Christian and born into the family of God and in the family, in the family of God, bought by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse number one, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures, he leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Don't cry for me, don't shed a tear, I've been set free. God spoke to me, my time had come, he made a way to bring me home, don't cry for me, my pain is gone forever, don't cry for me, my body's been Cry for me, I'm well within my 
one day. Everybody that's here this morning, we're going to face a judgment one day. And we hope you're ready. Hope you're ready for that judgment. Amen. I just want to thank the family on behalf of, of Ronnie, uh, Craig. We got the call Sunday that Ronnie had, that he had got his promotion had going on. And I got to talk to Ronnie many times while he was in the hospital. We live, we live down in Conley Springs, down close to Morganton. I got the call Sunday that he had passed away and I remember talking to Ronnie about two months ago in the hospital, and I'd call and talk to Ronnie and try to encourage him. He'd always encourage me, always have a kind word, and said, Preacher, thank you for calling, and just tell Pat we love you, and, and Sheila, we're praying for you, praying for the family. So uh, let's just turn to the Word of God today, and hope we can get strength out of the Word of God today. And in the book of uh, 1 Thessalonians, chapter number 4, we see a very familiar uh, uh, passage here. It's talking about the rapture of the church. And if you're ready... When Jesus comes back, he's coming to take his church out. Not the building, but the ones that's in the building. So in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, begin reading verse number 13. The Bible says, I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not even as others that have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. That we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be called up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. I, I'm, I'm interested this morning in verse number 13 is where I'm going to uh, get a little thought this morning and we're going to have three little quick points real quick and get out of the way. Uh, but the Bible says in, in, in verse number 13 it says, but I would not have you to be ignorant brethren concerning them which are asleep uh, that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. I want to talk to you, preach to you for just a few minutes this morning on some have memories but others have hope. Some have memories but others have hope. As we walked into chapel today and we looked over here on the screen, we saw pictures of Ronnie, the, the memories that, that the family had put together of, of Ronnie from, from a child up to the, to the day that, that he passed on. And, and the memories that you, uh, the families and, and the friends that you have today, you can take those memories and, and good memories, maybe, maybe some were sad memories during this time, but, but I want to say that, that there's something about memories. Amen. We all have memories and, uh, of the good times and the bad times. But I want to share with you today, on some have memories, but the Bible says that you, that, that you saw not even as others that have no hope. And, and I believe today as, as we stand before you, and I had talked to Ronnie many times when I was pastoring here in Asheville, and Ronnie, me and Ronnie become friends, and, and he always had a helping hand. He was always willing to help, and, and he would never take anything to, uh, I, I tried to, uh, he came and picked up a truck for me one time, I tried to pay him, he said, no, nah, preacher, he said, he just, uh, he said, just love you, and, and keep on preaching, but Ronnie had a hope, he had a hope of glory, amen, and, and the Bible says Jesus Christ, a hope of glory today, and we see that, that, that the Apostle Paul here is talking, here in chapter 4, about a great event that's getting ready to take place, and I believe we're in the last uh, of the last days and I believe Jesus is getting ready to come and, and if you're not saved today I, I beg you and I plead with you to check your heart today to, to see if you're ready for the Lord because he's coming he's coming the Bible's being fulfilled right before us and uh, but, but three little thoughts today uh, some have uh, 
Some have memory, but other has hope. I want you to notice, first of all, verse number 16. We see this great event, the rapture. First of all, we see that it's a promised event. Verse number 16. The Bible says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God. Amen. I want to say it's a promised event. All the promises in the Bible, God is going to keep his promises. He promised one day that Jesus would come as, as a babe, born in swaddling clothes and laid in a manger there in Bethlehem of Judea. He kept that promise. He kept that promise that Jesus would die on the cross for man's sins, for your sins, for my sins, for the sins of all mankind. And Jesus kept that promise. But Jesus promised also that on the third day, they would put him in a bar tomb. But on the third day, he would raise again and be victorious over death, hell, and the grave. He kept that promise. Amen. In Acts chapter 2, the Bible says you've been uh, the day of transfiguration. When the men of, uh, uh, was there, and they said, you men of Galilee, why stand you here gazing into heaven? For this same Jesus you seek leaving shall come again in like manner. I want to say today, church, it is a promise event for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven. Amen. Hey, I want to say today, I've got the hope of glory. Amen. Just some 30 you know, something years ago at a small church down in Cornell, North Carolina, about two and a half hours from here on a Sunday morning, this old boy, 28 years old, raised in church, knew the scriptures. Knew all the songs, but I was lost and undone without God. And mom and dad, but we had a drug problem in our house. Amen. Mom and daddy drug us to church. Amen. And I thank the Lord for that. And that Sunday morning, I'll never forget. I, I went in that day, and I didn't have, I didn't go to church to get saved. I went to church to get mama off my back. Mama had been asking me for years to come to church and, and come to church. And I finally got tired. I told my wife, I, I said, she don't, we're going to go to church this morning. We went to church that morning, Mr. Uh, Preacher Evans. Preached a message about salvation. I was on the back row. Man, I was a, I was a sinner lost on my road to devil's hell. But thank God somebody came by my way. Amen. The sweet Holy Ghost of God came and drove me that day. And I came down. I gave my heart to Jesus. Never been the same since then. And he gave me the hope that mama couldn't give me. He gave me the hope that daddy couldn't give me. He gave me the hope of glory. Amen. I have memories. But thank God I'm glad today I've got hope. Amen. Then I'm going to see Jesus one day. Amen. He He's coming. He's coming. Amen. So we see this a promise of him. Amen. Uh, the Bible says that for the Lord himself, he's not sending an angel. He's not sending Peter. He's not sending anybody that has passed us by. He, the Bible says Jesus himself, he's coming back. Amen. He's coming back, church. Uh, I believe right now in this time that we're living in this, uh, in this time, uh, uh, this pandemic, I believe God is trying to tell his people to wake up. I believe he's trying to tell his church, get ready, because I'm coming. Nothing's going to keep him back. He's coming one day, church. Amen. You say, preacher, can, can God really deal with my heart? Amen. I, I was just, a, like I said, I was a lost sinner on my road to hell. But Jesus made a promise. He said in Romans 10, 9, that if I, thou shalt confess with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. Amen. Thank God for that glorious day, February the 15th, 1988. I got saved. Amen. I got the shores of heaven. I got the hope of heaven. Amen. I'm heaven bound today. Amen. Nothing can stop me from going. Amen. So I want to say today it's a promise event. Not only that, but we see also <coughs> in verse number 16. Look, look, look at verse 16. The Bible says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout and the voice of the archangel and the trump of God. I like this one. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. So we see it's a promise event. But don't you say second of all, it's a privileged event, amen? All those that have gone on before us, amen, all those that have gone on before us, I've got a daddy that's on the other side, I've got two twin uh, grandbabies I've never saw that's on the other side, amen, I've got so many friends on the other side, amen, but the Bible says that the dead in Christ shall rise first. Those that have gone on, they're going to come up out of the grave First, that's a privilege event. They, the Bible says that, that they're going to come up out of the grave one day. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout and the voice of the archangel and the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Amen. Amen. So we see it's a promise event. We see that it's a privilege event, verse 16. But don't you notice in verse number 17. Then we which are alive and remain shall be called up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort you one another with these words. Verse 16, it's a promise event. Verse 16, the latter part of verse 16, it's a privilege event. 
But verse number 17, it's a permanent event. Amen? The Bible says, uh, 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 the Bible says in verse 17, Then we which are alive and remain shall be called up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen? I was thinking this morning as I was driving in from, uh, from Morgan's, <laughs> Oh, boy, we'd love to see Ronnie right now, wouldn't we? Amen. Boy, basking in the glory. Boy, no, uh, no, more, no more pain, no more heartaches, no more tears, no more sleepless nights. If we could see Ronnie today, I wonder why he would say. I wonder why he'd say to the family and friends that, uh, that knew him. I wonder if he could speak today and, and he would say something like, Man, it's wonderful here. I want everybody to come and be with me in my new house my new mansion, and, and he was from Swannanoa, but thank God now he's in glory. He's with his Savior. He's with the one that died for him, the one that he loved, the one that he talked to me about many times. Uh, then, uh, verse number 17, Then we which are alive and remain shall be called up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Then he says, Wherefore comfort you one another with these words. Some have, uh, some have memories, but others have hope. I want to ask you today, folks. I know everybody here has a memory of Ronnie, but how many of you have hope? How many of you have that hope in Jesus Christ? That, that, he, that you know that you're saved, that you're born again, that one day you'll go to heaven and you'll get to meet Ronnie again. I, I was thinking, as I was looking at some scriptures last night, the Holy Spirit says uh, there might be somebody here today that this may be the last time that you'll see Ronnie, but you'll have memories. Thank God I'm glad, I'm glad today that we can have hope. Amen. Paul said, if I have hope in this world only, I'm of all men most miserable. Some have memories. But do you have hope, folks? Do you have hope? Hope of heaven. Hope of glory one day. I'm going to read a, uh, Miss Pat gave me a poem here that I'm going to read. It says, come to me. God saw you were getting tired and the cure was not to be. So, he's put, so he put his arms around you and whispered, come to me. With tearful eyes, we watched you. Uh, we wa with tearful eyes, we watched you, and saw you fade away. Although we loved you dearly, we could not make you stay. Many times we thought, of, uh, many times we thought of you. Many times we cried. If love could call, if love could save you, you would never, you never would have died. A golden heart stopped beating. Your tender heart uh, hands to rest. God. Uh, God took you home to prove to us he only takes the best. Amen. What a great tribute. What a great tribute. Ronnie, as he's in heaven today, we're looking forward to that day to see him. We're looking forward to see him one day. So we, we ask you this morning, some have memories, but others have hope. Do you have hope of glory today? Is Jesus your personal Savior? He can be. He can be today if you'll just let him. Thank you so much. As I was walking deep in sorrow, thinking about the times we'd share. A butterfly danced round me, a white cloud in the evening air. And I knew that your soul was finally home. And like a blessing a message from Fly. 
Just a few days after, they called us to a church to pray. Loved ones gathered round you to bless and send you on your way. And as I got up to speak, it suddenly caught my eye. White wings against the window, a beautiful butterfly. in times like this. There's some real soothing songs and uh, we appreciate uh, good voices that can sing a song the way it ought to be sung, instruments to be played the way they ought to be played. And if it's used to bring honor and glory to the Lord, that's, that's a wonderful thing. Uh, let me just mention that we're honored to uh, take part in this service today be asked by the family. It's a uh, special time, it's a sad time but uh, there's also some precious memories. A songwriter wrote a song one time, uh, Precious Memories. I hope you hold on to those. And there's some negative me memories, but I hope you uh, don't hold on to them. And Ronnie uh, Ronnie's disappointed people like I have in days gone by, and he's been a blessing to people in days gone by. I don't want people to re remember how I disappointed them. And the Lord says, think on the good things over the book of uh, Philippians uh, and so certainly Ronnie would have you to do that. Uh, in the uh, paper uh, here in, in the Asheville area have a good picture of Ronnie and just looking at him kind of makes you makes you smile and uh, that picture whoever selected that picture uh, either uh, Pat or, or Sheila I, I like that picture it just kind of makes you smile. Ronnie Craig, born April 13th, 1964, of Swannanoa. Ronald Ronnie David Craig, 56 years of age, went to be with the Lord on Sunday, August 2nd, the year of our Lord, 2020, at John F. Kiever Jr. Solar Center. A lifelong resident of Buncombe County, he was formerly employed with Custom Exhaust on Patton Avenue and tops on Merriman Avenue. He was a member of Carolina Baptist Tabernacle and a 1982 graduate of Asheville High School. Ronnie was the son of Patricia, of course, Pat, and uh, Owen B. Craig of Swannanoa, and the late David Luther Craig, who died in 2008. He was also preceded in the death of his son, Jonathan Chip Craig, and I understand this was the day that uh, Jonathan passed away, and certainly that was a difficult time, but the Lord helps us get through these things. Surviving in addition to his mother or his wife, Sheila Wilson Craig, whom he married August the 27th, I believe Sheila said they're fixing to, would have celebrated their 11th anniversary, I believe, coming this, uh, 
August the 27th of this month, 2011. Of the home, Sister Tammy Elaine Stiles, husband Steve of Swannanoa, three nieces, two nephews, two great nieces, and four great nephews. And I think Ronnie enjoyed every one of them, and I think they enjoyed him. He liked children. There's something wrong with you if you don't like children, isn't it? A special thanks to Candace, Jennifer, and Susie for their special care and friendship. Also, we'd certainly like to commend the family for all the hours that they've uh, uh, invested in helping Ronnie, all the medication, and helping him with his doctor appointments, looking after him, checking on him, and just so many things that's been said. And uh, I personally agree with this, and it might not always be the case, but it's been said when you lose your mama, you've lost the best friend you've ever had. Well, Ronnie had his mother all the way, and we appreciate how good Pat's been to him. And then, of course, and uh, also, a best friend of man's ever had is usually his wife. And I can testify to that, and Sheila certainly uh, did so much to help, help Ronnie and other family members as well. So we commend uh, the family as long as, as well as these that are mentioned in the obituary, uh, Candace, Jennifer, and uh, Susie. Now we'd like to say thank you on behalf of the family for your tokens of sympathy. Uh, your uh, flowers and the food that's been provided for the family. And these flowers really uh, add to the comfort and that's what God intended for these flowers to do. If you remember a better day coming when uh, there'll be a resurrection of the just uh, and uh, as Brother Larry read a minute ago, we appreciate Brother Larry Nance, and he read about that reunion we're going to have one day when the Lord comes back. But thank you for your tokens of sympathy, the flowers and the food, and your prayers and your presence. So I know you've been praying for this family, and a lot of you have been praying for them a long time. And I know there are many here to, today that's... Uh, Love the Lord, and you've been in church. You know the Lord is your Savior. You've been praying for this family. The best thing you do for a family is pray for them. And then your presence being here today. I thought about Brother Larry coming all the way from Morganton to be here in this service and take part in this service. He's been a friend of the family a long time. And I thought about a young man here this morning that said he got up at 3 o'clock in the morning this morning to get his work done so he could, he could be here. And then we thought about the Alabama crew uh, that'll be singing in just a moment. Uh, they came all the way from Birmingham, uh, Stephanie and uh, little Levi and uh, Gavin, and they came all the way from Alabama as, as well as Sheila uh, McKinney. So we appreciate uh, those that made a special effort to be here. When you've got little children, it's hard to be on time sometime, isn't it? You never know what these little old fellas are going to do. Uh, we got to hear Aaron sing, uh, Aaron sing uh, last week over at Ronnie's house, uh, trailer. And, uh, I, of course, to get him to sing, I had to give him a chicken leg and had to give him a dollar. He said he liked money. Well, I, I, I agree, but I like money too, don't you? But uh, I gave him a dollar. I, I, if I'd had more, I'd give him more because he sang a lot better than a, a dollar's worth. But we appreciate these little fellas being here. And Ronnie would uh, look at the little guys and he'd say, boy, I'm glad they're here. And on up to the older folks, I, I might be the oldest one here today. I'm getting where when we have a gathering, I'm just about the old, oldest one. But from the youngest to the oldest, Ronnie would appreciate your presence here today. Psalm chapter number 46, a wonderful psalm. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, she shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The heathen raised, the kingdoms were moved, he uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our refuge, Selah. Come, behold the works of the Lord, what desolations, 
he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Thank God for the refuge. Isn't that wonderful? Taking Ronnie's name and uh, is what I, I knew him basically by Ron, R-O-N. I won't take those uh, three letters uh, and uh, just give you three quick thoughts about uh, Ron and what I know about him. And I know you could add a lot of things and hopefully it'll all be good uh, with this uh, cross stick and these letters. But the letter R, I thought about a guy that was rugged. He was rugged. He was a mountain man. I mean, he's, he's, he's a tough guy. And uh, I, got, I got that down rugged, tough. He was masculine. When you looked at Ronnie, you didn't know if you was looking at a man or a woman. One nothing feminine about him. And uh, I mean, he looked, he, looked like a, he looked like a man, no doubt about it. Uh, a mountain, mountain man. Uh, tough, tough feller. I was looking at these uh, Paul bears right here. And I, I thought about Ronnie uh, in, his, uh, uh, in his prime. If, if I got in trouble, I'd want him on my side if he got down to a fight. These six fellas right here, they look like they could handle themselves pretty good too. And uh, so that's certainly uh, appropriate uh, to, uh, to have them uh, to bear the casket. Boy, I appreciate that. I went to a funeral one time and there was a man and he had wrecked and ruined his life with alcohol. And he had uh, uh, just turned his whole family away from him. And uh, because of that, and the Bible says that alcohol, that it bites like a serpent and stings like an adder at the last. Some would say, oh man, you know, makes you feel good, yeah, and all this stuff. Well, the devil will tell you a lie any day and to make you believe it, won't he? But uh, at the last, it bites like a serpent, stings like an adder. I remember having that man's funeral and I had to help the funeral directors tote his casket. And there weren't enough pallbearers to help him, and he'd run, he'd run off every frame he ever had. Had a funeral just right after that, and I bet there were probably 70 men there that would have carried that casket. So it's wonderful to have uh, six good men to be able to bear, bear that body, and tough fellers too. I thought about in the Bible, uh, sometimes the Lord gave uh, some of his disciples, or some of the men in the Bible had nicknames. <laughs> And not only uh, a nickname, but uh, a title. You might say a title. I remember this fellow named Peter in the New Testament, and he was called Rocky, or he was called a rock. And the Lord said, Thou art Peter. And that word Peter there is a small rock. But it's a tough, a rock, something tough. You hit it, you're going to end up worse off than the rock. And so Peter was a tough feller. And then Jesus turned around and said, Upon this rock, I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, he wasn't talking about Peter. He was talking about himself. Upon this rock, massive rock, like down in Stone Mountain, uh, Georgia, right outside of Atlanta. And they say that's the largest piece of exposed granite in the world. And a lot of you have seen it. A lot of you have been up on top of it. I've been, I've been there, and I've been up on top of it more than, more than one time. But upon this massive rock, Peter was a small rock, but Jesus is the rock that the church is built upon. And I hope you're on that foundation. He's the only foundation that's going to last when the winds of judgment come and the rains of judgment come. And so Peter was called Rocky, you might say. And then there's a man by the name of John. And John was called the beloved disciple. And then there's a fellow named by the name of Luke. And Luke was called the beloved physician. And you sure do appreciate good folks in the medical uh, profession. But if I had to give uh, Ron a nickname, I guess a lot of you have given him nicknames over the years. I don't know if I want to hear all of them. Some of them you might not want, you might not want to say publicly. But uh, if I had to give him a nickname, I'd call him Son of Tarzan because his daddy was known as Tarzan. They called him Tarzan. And if uh, David was Tarzan, that made Pat Jane. So uh, some of you remember the old Tarzan movies and uh, it goes way back a while, but that's what David was called. And I, and I, I mentioned that at his funeral year, years ago when uh, David uh, passed away. 
So if he's Tarzan, that makes Ron son of Tarzan. That's a pretty good nickname. Now talking about him being rugged and tough, back in February, his prognosis was zero. They just didn't give him no hope at all. Well, February came and, and went, and then Ron's still here. March came and went, Ron's still here. Uh, and uh, January and uh, March, April came and March and, and uh, Ron's still here. And May came and Ron's, he's still there. Well, the doctor said, well, you'd be gone with him back in February. Well, he's, st he's still around. Then May and then June and then July. Well, what about that? Well, he, he, he was tough. He hung on, hung on as long, as long as he could. He's a tough fella. So I thought about the word uh, rugged. I'm glad we got men that know they're men. Yeah, we got women that know they're women. In the beginning, God created male and female, the man and the woman. That's the way God meant it to be. God meant to, for a man to marry a woman, a woman to marry a man. Anything other than that's an abomination for the Lord, and you're welcome. You used to didn't have to say anything about that. Everybody knew that, had common sense enough to know that was, that was wrong. But Ron was a rugged, he was a man, mountain man. All right, the letter O in Ron, we think about the word open. He was open to the gospel. He had a personal testimony. Larry's talked about that, and I remember last time I had a, a personal talk with him alone, being alone with him there in the hospital. He uh, was open to the gospel. He wanted to make sure that he was saved. He is concerned about that. Well, I'll tell you, if you make, you better be concerned about it because you're an eternal being and you're going to spend eternity in a wonderful place for, called heaven or a horrible place called hell. And Ronnie was, hey, listen, he is open to the gospel. Man, listen, tell me, tell me, I want to make sure, I want to make sure I'm in. Well, well, we went over the plan of salvation again, talked about Jesus and uh, how Jesus died on the cross for our sins, was buried, and rose again. And whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Jesus only, he's the only one that'll get you in. And I said, well, have you, have you, you've done that? Yeah, I've done it. Well, I said, if you'll make sure, just, just do it again. Just make, make sure. And he wanted, he is open to the gospel message. Uh, and he had the personal testimony that he had trusted Christ uh, as, as, as his savior. Now, uh, there was a painting one time I saw, and it was done, I don't know who the artist was, but I went to a home to visit a young couple and encourage them to come to church. And over on the wall, even though they weren't in church and not claiming to be Christians, they had a painting, and it was a picture of what somebody thought that Jesus would look like. And it was Jesus standing at a cottage door. The door was shut, and he was knocking on the door. And over the door, there were vines that were growing over the door. And then, of course, you looked at the door, and somebody made the comment one time, viewing that painting, and they said the artist made a mistake, said there's no doorknob. And the person who knew about the painting, he said, well, the knob's on the inside. You see, you have to open the door to let Jesus in. And that's what Ronnie said he did. He opened the door to let Jesus in. Now, those vines that were growing on that door tells you that he'd been knocking a long time. And maybe for some of you, God's been knocking at your heart's door a long time. And this morning, God's given you the opportunity to hear the gospel. Brother Larry preached a moment ago, and I'm presenting to you as well. And uh, you've got another opportunity to open up that door and let Jesus in. You say, well, you've got to be in church. No, listen. There's an old boy in the Bible, and he was on a cross when he got saved. You remember the thief on the cross that turned to Jesus? And there he was being executed by the Roman government uh, for crimes that he was guilty of. And he turned to Jesus and said, Lord, when you come into your kingdom, remember me. And the Lord said, today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Isn't that great? Every place is the right place. Now, every, every time is the right time. Now is the day of salvation. So I hope if you've not, you're not, uh, you haven't opened up your heart, that you'll open up your heart and allow the Lord to come in. All right, rugged and open. And then finally, the last letter is the letter N. And we think about the word need or needed. Uh, he was needed and he needed people. He was needed and he needed people. 
Now, Larry mentioned a moment ago how he was uh, helpful and that he didn't want to get paid. I mean, do, do your favor. If he could do it, I mean, he'd do it. Now, I remember he helped us out in Monte Vista, out at the camp meeting. And then, of course, his mom, she's put many, many, Pat's put many, many hours in out there at Monte Vista for the old-fashioned camp meeting and the fellowships that we have. And we appreciate, appreciate that so much. Um, you need people to help you along the way. I, you better realize that in a hurry. You try to say, I myself, I don't need nobody. Well, that's, that's a dumb statement. We all, we all need people. And uh, Ronnie realized that he was needed. And he helped people when he could. As long as he could, he helped people. And uh, so he was needed, but he also needed people. And there were many, there were many that, uh, uh, that helped him. And I believe Ronnie, if he had a chance to talk today, I, I know he'd say, thank you for helping me. Thank you. I appreciate that for being my buddy, being my friend, being my family, backing me up and being here this morning to uh, help the family through this difficult time and uh, just to just show a little honor to Ronnie. Appreciate that uh, video tribute. Wasn't that nice? Some of you got here in time maybe to see the, uh, some of the pictures on that video. And that was, uh, it took a while to put that together. Appreciate uh, those that got the photographs together, the family. And I think they said there's over 50 photographs. And then uh, the folks here at Andrews Rice, Tommy, they put that video, put that video together. Uh, and that's a, uh, that's a service that they have here. That's a blessing. We haven't always had that, have we? But we, we appreciate those blessings. Uh, memorial pamphlets and so forth, we appreciate that. But uh, he would say thank you. Thank you for helping me. And it'd be a sincere thank you. Now listen, let me say, let me say this too before, uh, before we have that last song. That uh, you, uh, some of you tried to help him. And he didn't always listen to you. Well, now I've been there. I've had people try to help me in days gone by before I got right, I, and I didn't listen, I didn't listen. And a lot of us don't, we don't listen. We appreciate good advice though, you see? And Ronnie would say, I appreciate that good advice you gave me. I might not have listened, but then sometimes he did listen, you see, he listened. Uh, and uh, people are able to help you sometimes through advice, through good, good advice. And we've over the years tried to base our advice on the Word of God, try to have scripture to back it up. And if you base your advice on the Word of God, you, you're doing all right. So sometimes we listen, sometimes we don't listen. But I believe Ronnie would say, I appreciate that advice. I appreciate the effort you made to help me go in the right direction. I appreciate that. We'll have that closing song now.
for that uh, wonderful song, the other songs, and Lord, that uh, honor you, and we just uh, thank you that one day you're coming back, and there'll be a time where there'll be no more death. We won't have to worry about uh, funeral homes, and we won't have to worry about hospitals, and the sorrow will be over for your children. We pray just now that you bless each one here today. Thank you for each one that's made a special effort to be here this morning to help and comfort this family, especially uh, Pat and uh, Sheila. Just pray you uh, would uh, give a special blessing uh, to these. And, and thank you for the little fellas that are here this morning. We know Ron would appreciate that so much. And uh, special efforts at, that have been made to uh, encourage this family. Pray that you would uh, bless each of the family. May your hand be upon them. Give them strength for the journey. Thank you for Brother Larry and good message. Bless his ministry. Pray that you bless the Paul Bears. Thank you for the fellas here this morning and the good work that they're they're doing uh, to honor Ron. Uh, thank you for Brother Tommy and the uh, staff here at uh, Anders Rice and the good work that they do. Help us, Lord, to honor you, serve you. Most of all, we thank you for giving grace for the journey and being a refuge, a very present help in the time of trouble. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Service be concluded at the cemetery. Would you stand, please, except the family.